Hello, welcome to 8.9 News. I'm Finn Locustain. Today's headlines, the UK National Farmers Union finally joins calls for the use of GWP star in farm carbon footprinting. Research shows that adapted multi-paddock grazing is a carbon sink cooling the planet. And the Earth Commission says that humans are taking colossal risks with the future of civilization. Policymakers and farmers will gather at the Dynamic Earth Science Centre opposite the Scottish Parliament in Edinburgh later today to hear groundbreaking soil science from the US filmmaker and researcher Peter Bick, who will also present his new film series, Roots So Deep. I asked Peter Bick about the purpose of this afternoon's event. Well, for me, the purpose is to share the news of our research that we've just spent 10 years on working on grazing research, comprehensive grazing research to see if there's a type of grazing that could be uh, beneficial for the farmers, beneficial for wildlife, and is it beneficial for the climate? And, and so we've been, we've been studying grazing in the Southeast US uh, since 2018. And the five years before that was designing, recruiting, designing, and fundraising for the project and, and getting the science team together. So the idea that we've been sort of in our little hubble for 10 years to get out now and share the news is, is to me very exciting. And to be in Edinburgh is really exciting. I'll someday learn how to say the name of the city properly. And um, to be working uh, with you all uh, is all really good because having science done is one thing. There's lots of really good science that gets out there. And then because it doesn't have an easy way to get out into the world, it gets put on a shelf and not very many people see the data, see the work. And that's frustrating for scientists, but it's actually frustrating for the world because we don't want to miss this opportunity to learn. Um, because I'm a filmmaker who then helped organize a science project, we have built in the fact that the documentary about the science project is, is part of the science project. It actually isn't necessarily about it. It is it. Like the film and the science are all part and parcel to the same project. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, and it's it's a really unique role that you have. And as you say, this immense project over the course of a decade where you're bringing together your expertise with filming uh, with this incredible research that's been done, which is so important at this particular moment in time where there's so much conversation around soil carbon, soil carbon sequestration. I wonder in broad terms, if you can tell me, you know, what is it that you've been finding across that period? What does the science show? The science is showing that wildlife is actually landing on one side of the fence, the fence that's doing a type of grazing called adaptive multi-paddock grazing, which emulates the way large herding animals have roamed grasslands for millennia. Um, and then on the other side, the sort of conventional grazing where we build a big paddock, whether it's 12 acres or 40 acres, and let the animals roam in there for a week, two weeks, three weeks, a whole season. Those are the two differences of the grazing systems that we're studying. And we're finding out the wildlife using breeding birds as an indicator species are three times as likely to be on the amp side of the fence than they are to be on the conventional side of the fence. Um, we're seeing water infiltration three times as much water going into the soil on the amp side than on the conventional side. Um, we're seeing that that grazing writ large is a greenhouse gas sink out in the pasture, but the amp side is, is massive and the CG side is, is modest. And so what that says is that cattle on grasslands can actually bring down greenhouse gases when we're looking at methane, which everyone knows about, nitrous oxide, which few people know about, but it's incredibly strong, and CO2, which everybody knows about. When you factor all those in together and you look at the, the, the total net of greenhouse gas warming, of warming the world or cooling the world, grazing itself can be a sink, cooling the world. Amp grazing is a massive sink. Now, I know it's not a competition, but very often it's put in those terms that we know the degree that woodland is able to sequester carbon. Uh, we know the rate at which individual trees can sequester carbon. I wonder if you think that soil will be seen in a similar way in the future, that uh, soil carbon drawdown would be on a par with woodland or even surpass woodland. 
Well, if you look at all plants on earth, you look at carbon stocks, it's between 450 and 600 gigatons of carbon is in that stock right now. What's existing in all the trees, all the plants, the oceans have 40,000 gigatons. So that's the biggest stock of carbon. The atmosphere is holding about 830 gigatons of carbon right now. Soils are holding between 1,500 and 2,400 gigatons of carbon right now. So that's between two and four times what is in the plants is already in the soils. So it's just a question of just knowing the soils are an incredible carbon stock and we've been treating them so poorly with plowing, basically industrial agriculture, the, the chemicals we put on the soil, plowing it so it blows away that we could get a lot more carbon back into the soil system that used to be there. Example, I'm from the States. If you look at the Great Plains, we used to have 15 foot deep topsoils, topsoils of, 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 on, the, on the Great Plains, 15 foot deep topsoil on the Great Plains. And that was for, that had five to 10% carbon in there. Right now we've got inches of topsoil with maybe one or 2% carbon in there. So the opportunity to build those soils back up is massive. There's huge questions of how quickly can you build those soils back up. Um, our research was just scraping the surface on that. So I can't speak to how quickly we can scientifically prove that people are building soils, but I can tell you from being on farms where people are doing amp grazing, they are building their soils inches and decades. And so it's incredibly exciting. And even in all those soils that are all the, and even in all the carbon that's in the soils right now, the 1500 to 2400 gigatons, billion tons of carbon in the soils, about 350 gigatons of that is on pasture land. Yeah. And so just the pastures themselves have a huge opportunity. If we just treat them a little bit better, just a little bit better and nudge it that way, we can get to real scale of, of drawing down carbon from the atmosphere to counterbalance the methane from the animals by a lot, to counterbalance the natural nitrous oxide that's coming out of these systems by a lot. So I, when I go to these ranches and farms and I see the farmers getting themselves out of debt, I see a solution. When I see that wildlife is on their land in much greater numbers than on their neighbor's land who are conventionally grazing, I see a solution. When I see how much more water is infiltrating in their soils than their neighbor's soils, I see a solution. Um, and now with the greenhouse gas cycling data that we're still analyzing, it's still in, in play, but just knowing where we're at right now, it's probably gonna get more pronounced. Um, we can say that amp grazing is a huge greenhouse gas sink. When thinking yes. about methane, nitrous oxide, CO2, all coupled together properly, accounted for properly, it's a massive sink and that's, that's what we didn't know. We spent 10 years and close to $10 million with a lot of funders from corporations to private donors to universities. We didn't know that. We knew it looked like a better system and all the metrics that we've been talking about, but we didn't know what it was. Total greenhouse gas. Was it a source warming up the planet or a sink cooling it down? And we can say now it's a sink and that's big news. It is. It sounds think, remarkable. And, and it's it, we're so looking forward to that research, you know, actually being published in due course. I just want to talk about your film series, Roots So Deep, which is following on, of course, from Carbon Cowboys, which was fantastic. How does the film series fit into the story of Soil Carbon, to the research project? What are people going to get when they see it? And, and also, where's it going to be broadcast? Yeah, we're, we're looking for the right distributor now, the right streamer. We're just finished. We just finished last month. And we're going to start taking it on the road uh, June. We're in June now. So we're going to start taking it on the road this month in the States. We had a beautiful pre-screening down in Cornwall at the Lost Gardens of Heligan last summer, just testing. Mm -hmm. I had to see if the film was working as I was working on it, because you could go crazy if you think it's going to suck. Um, and and it worked really well for people. And we've been screening it since then. It's been working really well. The film is about the farmers who are doing the work on the land and about the scientists who are measuring what the farmers are doing. 
Um, we have 10 farm families in the Southeast US. So amp grazing on one side, conventional grazing on the other. And we got to meet everybody in all five of those farm pairs. So it's about the people, but it's also about learning about why do the science? What are the results? What are the concerns? You know, our big question was, will our science even show differences between the two grazing methods? We didn't know that. And then even if it did show differences, and if it showed differences that one system was a lot better than the other, would the folks doing the other method change, right? And we can say now that the AMP grazing method is a lot better on all the metrics that we measured. So now the question is, do the conventional farmers see the data and do they change? And there was a lot of people that were really skeptical that farmers would see data and even be interested in the data. And I wasn't skeptical. I thought farmers would love to see the data. Who wouldn't want to see the data on their farm, on the land they love? And I know every farmer I've met loves their land. No question. No question. I don't care what method they're doing. And so to get data, we we were giving them data that they could then see. And um, the big question that people will see at the end of our series is whether that has an effect on the farmers or not. So it's a four-part series. Each episode's about an hour. And so it's a streaming series. It's built like that. And episode four is the series, is the episode where we give the data to the farmers in the first half, and then we see if it has any effect on them in the second half of that of that episode. And that took years. We started filming in 2018, but the, the last half, we were still filming, gosh, and this year, last year, just barely. Yeah. So it's, it's very fresh and, um, it's the, it's the hardest job I've ever had. And, and, and therefore it's probably going to be the most rewarding. That was Peter Bick from Carbon Cowboys. More about this and our other headline news on our website, 8.9.com. That's all for now. We're back on Monday. Thanks for watching.